Hello, good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you may be. I wanted to take the opportunity to thank you for joining me for this conversation today through this recorded viewing of my talk. My name is Sarah Hutton. I'm the head of student success and engagement at the University of Massachusetts Amherst Libraries. And as an advocate of open knowledge sharing, I want to honor the contributions of colleagues that you will see throughout this presentation content that has been shared CC by NCSA and through ongoing collaborations. More information about UMass Amherst to provide context for what I'll be talking about. We are located in an agricultural area in Western Massachusetts on the East Coast of the United States. We have over 31,000 students offer baccalaureate and graduate programs as well as doctorate programs. As a Carnegie R1 institution, we have a very high level of research activity. Now, when considering a strategy for the integration of open education resources at my university, I frequently find myself using the metaphor of a sandwich. With this layered approach, you have to tailor your strategies to each constituency, the faculty, undergraduate and graduate students, and the administration, as they all play a role in a successful program. Each layer is essential to hold up that entire strategy or a successful sandwich. Now, when broadening that sandwich metaphor to a more targeted strategy for successful institutional support of OER, I look to recommendations provided by Rajiv Janghiani of Kwantland Polytechnic University in his recipe for successful strategy. It is important to consider how to connect that passion of grassroots efforts to a sustainable program that receives support from administration. I'm going to focus on our open education initiative as a critical first step in bringing that energy and innovation from the grassroots level toward a sustained strategy. Our open education initiative is a program that was started in 2011 with money supplied by our provost and the libraries, funding grants between $1,000 and $2,500 USD. In subsequent years of the program, funds came from the Friends of the Library, the Center for Teaching and Learning, and the Instructional Innovation Group. This grant program has now been offered in eight cycles and grants are given with priority to the projects that utilize or create the most openly licensed materials. The intent of the Open Education Initiative Program is to incentivize faculty to develop alternatives to outrageously priced textbooks by providing support to faculty for content selection, adoption, and or creation. Now, as many of the other Lightning Talk speakers mentioned, there is a lot more to open ed than just textbooks. And when I talk about textbooks and how outrageously they are priced, I like to keep in mind that there are multiple modalities for delivery of content for that transition from a published textbook to an openly published piece of content, whether it's a textbook, a course pack, or learning tools. So, Instructor proposals for the OEI awards are reviewed by representatives from the Center for Teaching and Learning, the CTL, Academic Innovation, and the UMass Libraries, as well as a faculty partner. It is through this collaborative partnership on campus between the libraries IT and the Center for Teaching and Learning that we are able to make that lift, that review process, reviewing all of these proposals, and helping to support the development of the content helped to make that lift a bit lighter for that pedagogical shift to OER. This is an example from one of the 2019 OER award recipients, Tori Trust, and was created for her Teaching and Learning with Technology course. This open, innovating Teaching and Learning with Technology open textbook hosted on ED Techbooks was created in collaboration with graduate students from her course. This is an example from a 2018 OER award recipient, Angela Roel, who collaborated with students to create a hybrid textbook workbook that can act as an instructional guide for record keeping and apiary planning and management for beginning beekeepers. You may recognize the platform. This is Pressbooks. We have um, an educational implementation at UMass Amherst. And also just another, um, you know, hearkening back to our agricultural UMass Aggie roots Again, we're big on the pollinators. They help keep our crops growing. So aside from marveling at the inspirational content being created by these instructors and students on shared projects, 
we've been keeping track of the impact that our OEI program has on cost savings for students, perception of quality of the content, and willingness to continue using open education resources. Here's just a snapshot of cost savings, how many students, instructors, and classes have been impacted, and how folks feel about continuing to use materials developed using the OEI grant. So getting back to that recipe from Rajiv, our open education initiative program covers a significant chunk of the recommendations on highlighting potential, garnering administrative buy-in, and raising awareness of OER across campus. So we have a lot that we have learned from this successful program. However, the proposals that are received from faculty are a bit scattershot. Um, they vary wildly by discipline and project type, and that's incredibly interesting and richly diverse. And it doesn't necessarily lend to establishing a strategy to implement OER broadly across the entire campus. So we are looking to amplify that passion and energy for many of our OER adopters by looking closely at how to tie our work with the UMass Amherst campus strategy. In my role as head of student success and engagement in the libraries, I'm uniquely positioned to move these conversations forward since my department provides support for some of the largest undergraduate programs. Two of the largest undergraduate programs um, that we are currently targeting for OER adoption is the writing program and the Commonwealth Honors College. Um, I, am, I serve as a library's liaison to both of those. So faculty from both areas have expressed support for OER adoption. And so I started working more directly with them to broaden implementation. I'll keep referring back to that, um, keeping that grassroots feel uh, in scaling up because I feel that establishing relationships with program directors, instructors, and administration is really at the heart of any successful program and supporting student success, regardless of how much it can ultimately scale. So in keeping that grassroots feel, um, our writing program reaches over 4,000 students each fall semester and is ripe for transitioning all required texts to an open model. I have a meeting with this group to discuss current and stretch goals, starting with moving their student anthology and writer's reader. These are required texts for all incoming students. Um, shifting these to an open model using Pressbooks as a platform for fall 2021. And so while keeping the conversations with the writing program directors content focused, I've been running the impact reports on the back end to share with administration. The potential cost savings per semester speak for themselves. If you're looking at marketplace cost um, between new digital and print for these required texts and the number of students impacted for our English 112 and English 112 honors programs, that's gonna be upwards of over 75,000 to over $80,000 worth of cost savings per fall semester. Um, and so that's a, that's a pretty compelling number to share with the administration. And now over here, you can see that our campus, our eCampus textbook selection system can now be set up to communicate textbook costs directly to students while they are registering for courses. And so, students can see while they're registering that there may not be a textbook required. This is just an example of an English course for spring 2021. So we convince the administration with the cost savings and then communicate to students while they're registering for courses and they can essentially, you know, fabricate their own Z degrees, um, though they may not know yet exactly what that means. So in keeping that grassroots feeling with the Honors College, I've been continuing to shepherd conversations to get all student theses into our institutional repository, ScholarWorks, and have started conversations with our undergraduate conference coordinators to get student presentations from our statewide student research conference into our institutional repository as well. This is session abstracts, presentation materials, posters, audio files. Um, I'll be meeting with that group actually in about five minutes when I'm done with this recording. I'm excited to get the conversation moving forward. Now thinking about what's next up to scale up and broaden across the campus, we're taking a look at our general education courses and programming. So we've already started this strategic move. We're targeting general education courses. Um, we have a, a running spreadsheet of all of the courses and are targeting the largest to shift to OER while still continuing to run those impact reports on the back end and share with administration. 
We are additionally continuing research on student and instructor perception of content quality and engagement levels with um, you know, a lot of this you know, increasingly interactive and multimodal content, particularly with, um, you know, as I, I mentioned again, we have an uh, instance of Pressbooks at UMass Amherst and with the, the um, integration at H5P, and now there's like over 42 different types of content uh, modules that you can integrate. Like you can have these wildly interactive, um, you know, pieces of course content. And we wanna keep talking to students about how that impacts their learning, how it gets them engaged um, in, in the content. So my hope is that in the coming year, we can articulate a multi-stage OER strategy document to share at the university level, which can also be tied to our OER work that is ongoing with the Massachusetts Department of Higher Education, with MassPerg, um, and the work that we've been doing with Open Ed for a Better World uh, in collaboration with Nelson Mandela University uh, on the Becoming an Open Educationer Influencer program. And that's a presentation um, that was provided at Open Ed at the OE Global Conference uh, a couple of weeks ago, you can share those links out. Um, because this isn't the live session, you're gonna miss the questions that came up, um, but feel free to contact me at any point. Reach out, get in touch. Um, here's my email, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, you know, I'm incredibly passionate about affordability and engagement when it comes to higher ed and am an open researcher and open advocate. So I look forward to talking to you about your OER strategy.